It's the place you go when you finish your show. We're your two best friends. Our names are Max and Ben. We're self-proclaimed television experts. It's reality alert. Oh my God, Mama Carol has come into town. That's right. We have yeah. John Franklin on the podcast, everybody, from The Circle Season 4. John, how's it going? I mean, I was having a good day, better day from that intro. I got to tell you, that is, that is, that is, you want to talk about some special work right there. That is some special stuff. I loved it. We're our tours, you know, that's. <laughs> some might say Renaissance, man. Yes. Yes. <laughs> We've been doing this a long time now. So Yeah. yeah. A really long time. Yeah. <laughs> we gave Alyssa a much better one. Don't worry. Oh, good. Good, good. Yes. <laughs> Nothing about me should ever be overproduced. Let's, let's, let's... <laughs> we did have to ask her on the podcast how to pronounce her last name. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, <laughs> no, like yeah, because like the way that I always remember it is her bio for a while is like it's literally lube, so I know it's like lube, like, yeah. like yeah, like, I know, like, I know, like that's how it's just how it flows. Yes. Yeah, if I if I had never seen it, I'd be like, that's a lot of consonants. There's a lot of consonants in a yeah. row. And <laughs> it was a tough one, but we're just glad we asked it on air instead of off air. Let's be professional. Yeah, yeah. be as transparent as possible that's, about our ignorance. <laughs> That's called yeah. Big J journalism, Matt. It's fine. Yeah, there yes. you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, John, how did you end up on the circle? That that's what I want to know. I, I I don't know. How'd you end up on it? Yeah, no. Uh, I was in between jobs at the time, and I was applying for jobs like a madman. And I was like, you know what? I've always wanted to go on the circle. I never applied for a reality TV show, and I was like. I'll apply to the circle and I'll apply to jobs and whatever happens first, I'm going to just do it. And at the same time I got my job, I got the email back that they were like, Hey, we want to audition you for this. And my first audition, I get there and they're like, all right, so tell us what you're going to do when you play it, when you play the game. And I was like, all right, so I'm going to be me. And they're like, we're going to stop you right there. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> so they were like, well, if you could be anybody else, who would you be? And I was not prepared for that. And I panicked. And I went, I play my mom. And they kind of hit me with a, go on. <laughs> and, and I just started pitching it. And that day, they were like, all right, we need 15 photos of your mom. And my mom doesn't have social media. So I called her. And like the godsend she is, I said, mom, I need 15 photos of you. No questions asked. And she took 15 pictures, identical pictures in our house that day. Of just doing <laughs> what, it's like house. selfies? Or oh, no. My dad, my dad did the photo shoot. My dad did it. It's it's incredible. There are things that didn't, that didn't make it on the show, but like my favorite one that if you go back and watch my intro and you watch closely, she's cooking in a blue blouse, but there's nothing in the pot and the flame's not on, and that's from that day. Like she was legitimately just posing around the house. Doing it. <laughs> That's amazing. So you were applying for jobs and, and you got a job. You got the circle. Did you show up yeah. to your audition wearing a suit and did you bring a resume? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, after the amount of, I interviewed a week before to be the social media manager for Omaha States. <laughs> And I'm so glad that this worked out and not that because <laughs> there was an off chance where I probably mixed the two up and I showed up to the Omaha Steaks bit, like in her interview, like, so guys, I'm John. Like, I'm <laughs> <laughs> and like a week later, I'm like, yeah, I really love meat. And like, then I'd never make it on the show. And like, so yeah. Omaha Steaks is a really excited social media manager. But I'm not going to be selling steaks as myself. I'm going to be selling as my mom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So you said you got your job and the circle at the same time. Did they let you go on the show and then come back yeah. to your job? Yes, they did. So oh, nice. I, so my job, like I do social media for Ben MGM. Um, and I, one of the big things that I do for us is like, I'm, I'm on air a lot. So I do a lot of our like social media video and a lot of the videos, like I'm just constantly in them interviewing people. It's really cool. Love the gig. Um, but when I left, I was like, you know, I don't know what this is going to turn into. Like, hopefully it like everything willing, it turns to a big following. Um, and it will kind of just help both of us out. And my, but like my boss and his boss are like 
very incredibly supportive of like work life balance. Like they're like, you know what? This is a crazy thing. I've never had a request like this. You should just go do it for the life experience That's and cool. worry about the job later. And uh, they, you know, I came back and right back into the swing of things like a month, like a month after leaving. And they were, they've been as supportive since I left since the show aired. Like they love it. It's really cool. So That's what really odds cool. did they give you to win the circle? <laughs> I, I, it's actually so funny. You said that they were like, we should, if it were a live show, they were going to just like set, like just between the social media team, like make up fake odds Yes, and not yeah. actually bet on it. And like, there was like, as the show came out though, because I didn't tell them the end, yeah, or, like how it all worked out. They were like, kind of being like, all right, John started out. He's like plus 3000 because this is the stupidest oh, wow. concept I've ever heard in my life. They gave you plus 3000. Oh generous. my God. They were like, yeah. they were like, you're playing your mother. And like, there's no way they believe that it's you. And then like, but like a few messages in, they were like, dude, plus 250. He's way too good at talking like his mom. Uh-huh. Like they were like, this is like yeah. snake level crap. <laughs> wow. yeah, it's really fun, dude. It's, it was crazy. to let me go. I'm so thankful for it. Let's see, do we have, I think we have some questions in the chat. Let's see, yes. we got Daniel Harmon here, not not the uh, community showrunner, but different Daniel Harmon. Uh, John, Alyssa said in her interview that she was super impressed with your knowledge of older music. Of the quote unquote homework you did before going in, how much do you think was worth doing versus overkill? You know, I did no homework. Uh, I am a very, <laughs> I'm a very old soul, dude. Like those musical references, things like that. It's like I love like. I collect records. I love old movies. Like my favorite movie ever is Casablanca. Second would be Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Like that's like, like I love like 70s, 80s era of gotcha. things. A lot of the stuff my mom found popular. Um, the only thing that I wish I didn't do uh, was that my sister actually taught me how to do very basic makeup on a mannequin head because of what happened to Jack in season right. two because I, I think nervous. all catfish are doing that now <laughs> yeah. yeah it's it's the trend it's like hey if you're gonna be a catfish yeah. you better go buy a mannequin head but like well, that trevor like, did like an insane amount of that yeah he would he would do delicious like, yeah. makeup like every day or something <laughs> yeah which is like i mean for me luckily because i'm playing my mom you're doing like a subdued amount of makeup like it's not like you gotta go crazy like you ling level makeup with things like just the very basic i'd be fine and sure. then a cake yeah. came into play and that was different <laughs> So Rod Stewart. So who is Rod Stewart? Is that like real? Is that real? Is, is that... that real? Dude, <laughs> when she asked that, <laughs> I love Parker. I have to preface that before I begin this answer. I love her. She's one of my best friends. Um, when she asked me that question, it took every non-ounce of New Jersey in my body to not say what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> is he? Yes. The, the only anything. bigger crime would have been asking who Bruce Springsteen is, right? Oh, that. Well, that. Then I just be like, get out. I, just that door I quit. That door. Yeah. I quit the circle. I'm leaving. Well, my mom. So my mom's favorite musician is really Rod Stewart, and she had asked me like before I left. I don't know, not before I left, but when the show came out, she was like, "Why did you say your favorite artist was Bruce Springsteen if it would have been like helpful to your game?" I was like, "Mom, do you not realize?" Like for like five years, you sat in the front of the car and I was in the back. So you controlled all the music. And it was a six CD changer of Rod Stewart's singing the American classics. Like if I don't know it by now, like it's just ingrained in my mind, you know? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) How is, uh, how did your, uh, has your mom been uh spotted yet has has anybody pulled her aside and said oh my god your mama carol from the circle so not uh individually like not by herself she hasn't experienced that yet uh obviously (laughs) like around our hometown so max like you know caldwell is like it's like a reasonable sized hometown but a lot of people just tend to know each other in new jersey it's like that kind of thing um so they just like ask about what it was like having a son go on a tv show yeah but when i'm with her and we're out in public because i get spotted a lot it's just, I guess, just because like the long hair thing, like I'm easily recognizable and whatever. But uh, when I'm with her, people get so excited to meet her. It's honestly really cool. Like she yeah, gets her 15 awesome. minutes and like, it's cool that we get to kind of live it together in that moment because like, you know, she, you know my mom's my mom's in her 60s and it's like, who would have thought that in her 60s, she'd be going through something as crazy as this. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, she's really enjoying it. It's been really awesome just to see her experience it. <laughs> Does she approve of your depiction of her? 
uh, everything as she has said to this day, everything I've ever said and everything that I did was spot on to her. Really? Wow. Yeah. There's actually something, this is like one of my favorite insider info things that I tell people about the show that didn't make it in the show, but I'm allowed to talk about it. Okay. Uh, during the toga party, like when we did the toga party and they had Everson's boat party, right? Like the cruise party, mm-hmm. our song that we danced to, because they danced to Mambo number five, and that makes it in the show, them dancing to Mambo number five. What doesn't yep. make it in the show is we danced to I Will Survive. And after the song ended, my oh, message, right. yeah, my message in the group chat was, wow, Gloria Gaynor, that takes me back. And up to that point, Alyssa was still in the game and she was at the toga party, I believe. And I think Nathan was there too. And nobody knew who Gloria Gaynor was. So they've told me after the fact, they were like, we thought for sure at that point you were a catfish. And then you dropped Gloria Gaynor in the chat. We are like, how does she know that if she isn't 60? Like, she's, no, why don't we know that? Yeah, yeah. So it was like. You know what's funny is I'm I am notoriously bad with music. Uh, it's like a running joke on this podcast. I knew that Gloria Gaynor saying I will surprise. <laughs> Good. Well, did, you know, surprise. did you know Rod Stewart was a person? Because that's also impressive. <laughs> <laughs> I knew Rod Stewart was a person. Well, we, well, we Parker that also didn't part. know that Carrie Underwood was a person. So we have to. Uh, I'm really, I have, <laughs> that's I a have head to scratcher shout, too. Yeah, I did the show Parker out though. Like, even though even though like she didn't have much pop culture like knowledge of those types of things, Parker is like really smart like when you talk to her one-on-one she is incredibly intelligent to talk to and like she carries herself so well like i love getting to talk to her one-on-one she gives like mm-hmm. incredible advice too so i think that was just like a like a rough depiction of like some pop culture knowledge because it doesn't depict her as a person at all you just like yeah. that parker thought you were hot john that's yeah no that's yeah, that's, that's totally to. it that's totally it. you're right i actually don't talk to parker at all this was all it was all a farce <laughs> I, just, I, yeah. I was just hoping to go bring back up that conversation no, that yeah, was you're dude. fishing yeah <laughs> literally <laughs> all i wanted was compliments there john i feel like people uh, i mean maybe at that point with the gloria gainer thing people were like maybe mama carol isn't a catfish but i feel yeah. like people sniffed you out as a catfish Pretty quickly, at least it seemed like this early on the show. Why do you think this was, and uh, what do you think you could have done better to make people think that you weren't a catfish? I don't think I did anything necessarily wrong. I think what happens is like there's a common thing with this game. It, when, when somebody older is in the game, you have a natural inkling to believe that they're not who they say they are because they would not understand what's going on and how to play the game. And I think like mm-hmm. for me, I was very good at the whole branding thing. Like the hashtag mama Carol was a big thing. And after a while, it's like, as you're maintaining it, but people keep getting added to the game. Like when you get added to the game and you see a 63 year old woman, you're like, that can't be like that. She can't be real. And then you see like, there's branding surrounding around it. They're like, okay, that's definitely somebody who's younger. Like I, I did. It's just that thing caught on like wildfire. I didn't even really want it to be a huge thing. But once Frank said it, it's just like became a thing the entire time we were there. You know? Yeah. And yet Brew was branding like crazy, but everybody was pretty confident that Brew was Brew. Yeah, Brew's well, not know, 63. Yeah, that's <laughs> well, true. Uh, yeah, like, true. Yeah. And Brew's a social media guy, but that was like, like Brew and I still, I mean, like we're very close friends. And like, even on the show, like you could just tell like the, our personalities just kind of made sense to make an alliance. But after a while, all we had was each other. And we were like, like that that day when I get when I get canned, like that yeah. was my Custer's last stand. That was me standing up and being like, you know what? I don't think I'm gonna make it past today. So I'm mm-hmm. gonna call out the BS that's going on and hope that <laughs> it carries through for the rest of the time. And it, it it actually did, which is crazy. Did you ever consider during that last stand revealing that you uh were a catfish? Uh to the group no to brew yeah i thought like if i talked to brew before i went like before everything went down where i was gonna have to meet everson before i went out there i was like i gotta tell brew that i'm not like i don't want him to find out with everybody else sort of a thing you know it's kind of like the loot like like the luke i am your father thing it's like (laughs) like it was like it was like i i don't I, i can't just let him find out that i'm a dude because like you can tell me he like him and I really got along, but he had, he didn't think I was really my mom. 
he says it. He's like, yeah. I know she's a catfish, but whoever they are, like they, I had, I had his back the whole time. Like, say what you will about my game as a catfish, I never snaked anybody that I instilled trust in. I never like turned on anybody. The people I, I confidently gave, like, I got my, if you got my back, I got yours. I did the whole time, you know. Yeah, yeah. That that was a, a really different thing this season that we saw from previous seasons was people saying. Uh, you know, I actually, I'm pretty sure they are catfish. I don't know if I care that much. Well, that was my goal. I think when I, when I left to do the show, a big pitch for what I, what I did was, you know, I think the reason why I'm going to be my mom is because there's this huge culture thing on social media where somebody who always reaches out to you and asks how you're doing, always wants something from you. Mm -hmm. Whereas like, I thought if I put my mom as sort of that facade and I just acted the same way I always do. I'll get that trust from people. And it worked like that. And it's been cool to see the audience reaction, like the fan reaction. Cause even people on the street will be like, they'll come up to me and be like, you know, you were my, one of my favorites I've ever seen on the show because like I did something that changed the game. And like, that's really cool. Like, even though you don't win when you do something that changes the game a little bit, you know, people are always like, I'm not always going to be John from the circle my whole life. Like hopefully like, there, you know, a bunch of other things happen for me from this. And if they don't, my life remains the same. But when people look at for future seasons, they're like, you know what? Like that catfish is the way they are because John was like that in season four. Yeah. Did you have any um, reservations about the fact that you were going in as an older person, considering in the circle, traditionally going in as an older catfish can be dicey, mostly because they don't cast a lot of older people on the show. And so I think right. naturally people are guessing like, uh, they wouldn't have cast an old person on the show. Like, so this has got to be a catfish, right? The day before I left, I was talking to my best friend and he said the same thing to me. He's a huge reality junkie. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you know, like, you know, they're going to try to sniff you out right away. Like you're playing your mom or whatever. And I was like, uh, you know what? I spit in the face of adversity. And that was the last thing <laughs> well, I said to him. <laughs> and I was, I was like, you know what? Like what I, I, it's like, you know, you're digging your grave at that point, right? Like I knew yeah. that people were naturally not going to believe who I was, but it was True. like, if I do what I'm supposed to do, I'll stick around. And if I'm going to be honest with you, I think I made a lot farther than people thought I ever could when they first yeah, found you, out. Yeah, you really, I mean, when Bruce saved you over Alyssa, I mean, that, I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. You, you really kept surviving. <laughs> I was like Lazarus, dude. Shout out the biblical references, but I was like... <laughs> I just kept coming back. People were like, he's down, he's done. And then I would just like spit up at them and be like, not hard enough. Like, I, like I'm, I could get back up from these punches. I think anybody who plays a catfish uh, is, is at a disadvantage right from the start, obviously. But uh, to, to play an older person is like, I feel like so much harder, but it's also like, yeah. in my opinion, it's got to be funner than <laughs> most anything else that you can do. Like it's fun yeah. to watch for the audience. I, I imagine it's fun for the player to be doing it. I, I don't know. It, I find it entertaining. Oh, yeah. oh dude, I had a great time. Uh, the hardest part is like, you're basically method acting. You're making up who you are. You're referred to as somebody else the whole time you're there. Like people are only calling me Carol. So like, that's like the weird part. But like you said, it's like, there's like a cheap thrill about it where it's like, I'm lying to all these people, but like, I, I was only lying about what my name was. I wasn't lying about my whole game. Whereas sure. like, you know, like I love, like, I love Alex. He's a great dude. That was like a strategist's mentality, the way that he played the game. Right. Like there was no, he didn't care about the personality. He cared about the, uh, Oh, I love catfish make the show. We'll take that. Yeah, that's uh, from Alex Lake from season one. <laughs> is it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. Good. We'd love to hear that. But Alex from my season on the flip, on the flip side, uh, we talk about it all the time. He, he was all strategy. And I think that's another thing, a layer to changing the game type characters. Like imagine if Alex made it into the final five doing what he did. Like imagine what if he ended up in like the final two somehow, then it's like whole, th this takes away this whole emotional hold that that kind of has it has itself on the game a lot of the times like okay now somebody's playing strategy and it's like that's yeah. different yeah it uh alex especially was was a very different type of player than what we've seen a lot on the circle i uh, max and i we've, we've talked about this a lot though that uh this season the cast was very similar to like season one's cast uh where it was a lot of Hashtag circle fam, voting from the heart, things like that. Whereas season two and three, it seemed to be a little bit more strategic and tactical. Uh, so it, 
when you when you end up with I feel like the finalists that we did end up with, it was kind of a no brainer that Frank was going to win that. Uh, yeah, because he was just this huge, as, as everybody kept saying, this ray of light. He's a ray of sun. Everybody loves the guy. Dude, I mean, how could you? How could you not? You know, yeah. like even re- even in real life, like the guy is just. I mean, what a personality! What a great dude! I mean, we talk. Yeah. Uh, you know, we try to talk as much as we can, and, and every time it's just like, the guy brightens your day. I, there couldn't have been a better person to win the game. Like as as like yeah. a, just like a good hearted, great person. I say it all the time. Nobody deserved it like Frank did. If, like, yeah. You know what I mean? If we're going from that, like, there's nobody who deserved it more than him. What a great yeah. dude. I do think that's cool, but. Oh, shit, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do think that's cool that, like, because uh, we were certainly questioning some of the rankings coming from the other contestants in the finals because of. You know, like Trevor could have won if he didn't <laughs> rank Frank first. Uh, even if he just ranked him second, I think he would have won. Uh, yeah. But you know, it was cool to hear the reasoning behind it because we we've heard uh, that Trevor basically was like, you know, I just wanted to make sure that if it wasn't me that won, it was Frank because I felt he deserved it the most aside from myself. So it, it sounds like that's a lot of the reasoning behind the way most people voted was like, I just want to make sure this season has a really good winner too. Yeah. And I think uh, as far as like Trevor too, I mean, he's just a stand up dude. Like mm-hmm. even the, his post when the winner came out, like the, he celebrated as hard as Frank did, if not harder when yeah. he won. Like in, in, that was cool. That was cool. And yep. you see it. And like, that's what this show, that's what's so cool about this show and like doing it is like, you know, it's not, it's not like we ever meet each other until the very end. So like, even when there's gamesmanship and things involved and like people can get at people's throats and people can get upset. We went through this crazy unique situation where we're all in an apartment building, like only talking to each other. Like we're not speaking to anybody in the outside world. So it kind of all goes away as soon as that winner is crowned. Like there's no like fuck yous. There's no people getting mad at each other. It's like, can you believe what we just did? Like that was crazy. Yeah. And, like it was all worth the experience. Yep. So let's say you made it to the final five. Now, no, it's hard because you didn't make it there, and we don't know who else would have been the end. Do, yeah. do you? Do you? Think let's say you, him instead of Everson. Let's say. That. Yeah. Or let's say. Yeah. Do you think you would have been more likely to vote with your heart or with your head? Like, do, do you think you would have been more likely to to vote Frank in number one, like everybody else, or do you think you would have been more likely to vote strategically? I mean just from just breaking it down, right. Of who would have been there. Right. So it would have been me, Trevor, Rachel, uh, Yuling and Frank, right. That would have been, that would have been the group. Yeah. yeah. So I don't have group, don't have Alyssa. Yuling and I had beef by the end. Like, even if I wanted to vote strategically, Frank is still my number one. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know much about Trevor at that point. Rachel and I oh, had beef. Interesting. Okay. like, like Yuling and I had beef. Like, even if I want, I wasn't going to, let them win anyway but i would like you know what i mean like, yeah not in, a, not in a bad way but like they screw yeah me enough, they, they screw you enough times like you you want to get them back a little bit but if i voted with my heart or if i voted for the game frank would have been my number one regardless. that's a that's a great articulation of, of what yeah. you're thinking i uh, that's i get that i get that yeah <laughs> that's cool uh, I we I want to circle back a little bit because I I noticed we had some questions in there the chat. There was a chat. really there was a really funny one. Yeah, here's here. one from Maria, our listener Maria. She says, "Was your mom offended that you walked slower to be her <laughs> oh, <laughs> in the game with the question. steps game?" Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, you know, so the good part about <laughs> that is they don't like my mom didn't know how much actual time we had, uh-huh. right? So when it ended and I was still close to the top with Brew and Everson on my team, she was like, okay, okay. At least you didn't tank me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but, yeah. but my mom, the thing, <laughs> the thing that's so hard is my like mom walks 11. every fucking day, guys. My mom goes on walks every day with our dogs. It was like, it was so hard yeah. for me to gauge how far she could make it. But I also like, not everybody in the game knows that she goes on walks. So I have like this double-edged sword in my head. I'm like, I got to respect my mom because she's going to watch this. But also, 
I don't want them to think that I'm not her. Like, you know what I mean? And you're probably damned if you do and damned if you don't in that situation. Ex- people, exactly. are, don't... people are still going to question things regardless. Yeah. Dude, I, I lose either way. I yeah. lose either way. For pretty much any game. Really. <laughs> oh, my God, yeah. yeah. Like, the the one game, like, the two games I did well in was, uh, like, thumbs up, thumbs down in the very beginning. And then also I got a uh, Spice Girls question right, and it doesn't make it in the episode. Oh, so really? I, I was bummed. I was like, the one thing I got, I, I was like, they thought they were going to have me on that. And then I got it right. So I guess they were like, all right, well, we can't put it in. So like, you know, other, I, other people were probably going, uh, oh, is she too old to know this? Spice Girl? You know, because you could <laughs> you could go either way with that. Yeah, exactly. Like, but the thing that was in my head was like, you know, my, I said my mom was a retired marketing professional on the show. So you think oh, somebody who works in media would probably know about the the sure. probably the biggest thing in marketing and media in the nineties. Yep. So yep. that's Makes what sense. that's why I was like I got to nail this and I got it right. But I was like, you know, I got no I got no spoils of that. I, I got no nothing, no recognition. It was but it was fine. Also, all right, sorry to rant about these games. No, go for it. But the fucking okay, the roast I was so pissed because Nikki Glazer is a legend. Okay. And She's I do awesome. and I, I do Nikki. stand up and getting to like write that roast but as my mom was like so upsetting. But also at the same time because <laughs> you wanted same, to impress Nikki as yourself. Well yeah but at the same time <laughs> then the, the edit comes out. What doesn't make it in the edit is after she, she reads my whole roast and I wrote a very long rambly roast as if it would have been my mom like in a text message like she said but at the end she says and at the end of it you won me over and that that little bit doesn't make it in the show but what does is my absurd celebration being stoked like just being like that's awesome yes like nikki glazer said i did a good job being my mom and i'm like like they don't have the one part that I was really excited about, you know. <laughs> she rules. No, <laughs> legend. Oh my god, what a legend. I'm so happy the way her career has gone. She's starting to blow up right now. Oh yeah. my god. Talk about somebody who deserved it earlier, too. Like she's I know. Really yeah, she yeah, really she's did. so funny. She's so funny. Have you watched F Boy Island, by the way? Have you seen that show? No, I haven't seen oh, it. Oh, it's so she's really good. funny. She's she's the host of it. She's so funny. It's okay, on I'm HBO sure, Max. Yeah. Oh my god, it's so good. Um, yeah. In the first blocking, when uh, you were an influencer and you blocked Parker, was there ever any question about whether it was going to be Parker or not? I think I think it came down to like Parker or Yu Ling. Maybe it seemed like okay. between you and Frank. Like, was there ever really a question? So, in my mind, no. I can't speak for Frank, but I will say that in our conversation, like he did mention he wasn't so sure about Yuling and she did get voted fifth in that ranking. And at the time I, I loved Yuling. And like, I was like, I think if I have the, the numbers of the girls, like I'm going to be good. So I had like said to him, I was like, I really want to save Yuling. Like I'm animate about Yuling, but we haven't said anything totally like solid about Paul yeah. other than Frank's thing was like, he was a guy and Frank like having the guys pretty much. But then, you know, like I, I had no problem getting rid of Paul. And then uh, what ends up happening is like, obviously we know how it got turned on me that people saying that I saved them, which isn't exactly what happened because in the beginning in, in like Frank and I's back and forth, we kind of did a back and forth thing where I said, he was like, you want to go first? And I said, yes, I want to save Alyssa. And he said, sounds good. Then he wanted to save Brew. And I said, sounds good. And then I said the thing about uh, said the thing about Yu Ling, and he was like, "We'll revisit it," but that doesn't make it in the edit. It was just like I said the thing about Yu Ling, and we never yeah. went back to it. So there was definitely like a bit of a, you know, like that little shock when I watched it. I was like, yeah. Well, because like obviously like the edit only shows certain things, and I was like, "Wow, they really." When I watched it and figured, and but I was thinking back what happened, I was like, "They really." kind of fucked me like they kind of fucked me a little bit here so did did none of them reach out to you to ask you straight up what the deal was or confront you no do you wish they had (laughs) yeah i wish like there was a group chat situation where like Alyssa and you ling had said like yo frank said this and i would have explained exactly what i was just explaining to you guys i'll be like okay maybe the right word wasn't save even though i don't know if if i said save to us i forget but i'd be like the right word wasn't save but This is how we went back and forth. And what I basically meant was I want the girls around. 
And that I think that would have probably kept me in the game longer because then Yu Ling isn't cu- gunning for me. Even yeah. and like you could tell I had an emotional thing, like like an emotional attachment with Yu Ling based on the like when I gave my plea at the end, and they genuinely thought about keeping me around. Yeah. Like they like people like, I remember watching it being like, I didn't think it was this close, but they did. <laughs> Hey, All we right, got James. the winner of season right, three, James. James Andre Jefferson in the chat. He says, what's the circle? Oh, man. It's about <laughs> just giving your money uh, at the end uh, at, at the end away to someone. You know, everybody <laughs> everybody at the end decides to give the money to James someone. James would disagree, Max. <laughs> he would disagree with us. <laughs> no, James is my guy, though. Like Ever, ever since I announced that I was going to be on the show, like, James talks to me all the time, like giving me life advice, just things like to keep my eye out on. Like you want to talk about a great dude that James is the man. Like he's awesome. The only time we ever hell. get to talk to him is when he shows up in our chat randomly from time to time. So we love dude, seeing him in the chat. Funny, funny as all hell. <laughs> James, all check your DMs dude. sometimes. <laughs> Come on, James. Come back on the pod. No, um, we've messaged you 17 times. Like, yeah, yeah. What we were assuming with with this whole debacle of you saying that you wanted to save people is like you probably didn't think that if Yu Ling ever talked to Frank about it, that Frank would think, "Oh, Mama Carol is like throwing shade at me," because the connotation of saying that you saved people is that meaning that you were saving them from Frank, and we didn't think about that either. But it does make sense that it could be read that way because it's like, what are you saving them from or who are you saving them from? Uh, You have to be saving them from something or from someone. Right. Totally. And I think that's where the miscommunication lies. And that's the thing that's so hard about the circle is like, I chatted with you, Ling, one-on-one that one time. And Mm -hmm. that was like, it's like, oh, if I could have talked to her again, we could clear this whole thing up. But then it's like, you know, she obviously builds a great bond with Frank. And dude, like, I never meant to throw Frank under the bus or anything by saying yeah, what I did. Yeah, it was clear. I was just trying to be like, hey, like, I love you, Ling. I love Alyssa. Like, I want to keep them around and have make sure they know that I had their back. It had nothing to do with Frank. I loved Frank. Frank and yeah. I, we, we had, it was so easy in that first influencer chat. But then we never really spoke much again. But But like I said, it was never, like, there was never anything no malice towards Frank, even after the fact, like he never did anything wrong. Like he didn't, he didn't, he just like worked with the cards that were dealt to him as far as what I was said, what I said, and like what was said to him from somebody else. And it's not an open group chat. Like you can't just talk about everything. You can only talk about what you kind of get the chance to. Yeah. It was really funny. We were like having discussions like, like in each episode and we were like, Carol needs to just tell you Ling and Alyssa that <laughs> she saved them. And then you told them. And then the next episode, like you like has discussion with Frank and it's like, Oh no, now Carol's game is over. <laughs> yeah. Which is like, crazy. This, Carol's fucked. It yep. was crazy. Cause like when I watched it back, I was like, how did I make it past Chris and Alyssa at that point? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. How did I, how did I make it further than both? And it was just honestly luck of the draw because like Alyssa and Yu Ling went in to make that decision. And obviously that's when the whole thing comes about, but Alyssa still knew that I had her back. So that saves me. And then Brew and I have that conversation that day, just by some grace of luck, like some grace of God that it was just like, I got your back if you got mine. And it came down to that. It's crazy. That's wild. Yep. (laughs) When, uh, when it came to the antivirus blocking and Frank did get it first. Were you afraid when Frank got it first? No, because up until that point, I've I only talked to Frank in an influencer chat and group chats. I don't know what Frank thought of me, but I did know that he definitely had, he had to have had closer people in the game than me. So you didn't know at the time that he was close with uh, you Ling and Rachel, not Rachel. I I kind of assumed he was close with you Ling. But that was just because, like, you know, obviously, you, like, Rachel and Nathan get added to the game later. I don't really know how, like, what chats they're doing. I only know the chats that I'm doing. Uh, and I didn't know that that group chat had kind of been formed. But when he picked you, Ling, I also didn't know that you, Ling, had beef with me. Right. Because mm-hmm. I, did, I didn't know what those conversations were. So in my mind, the way that the antivirus software thing was going to go was Frank picks you, Ling. Like after that happened. So I was like, okay, you Ling will probably pick Alyssa or me. 
because I didn't know she had beef with me. And then she didn't pick Alyssa. And that's when I was like, there's so much of this game I don't know anything about. Because if if you think about it the way that I thought about it, let's say you link picks Alyssa. Alyssa probably picks me or Brew. If she picks Brew, like I'm just going to say that the latest I'm going to get out, right? Yeah. If Alyssa picks Brew, Brew picks me, then I'm the one making the decision between Nathan and Rachel. Who would yeah. you have picked? I would have picked Nathan. I would have picked Nathan because... Really? Okay. Well, that was because I had no reason to feel threatened by Nathan, and I knew him and Brew had a relationship. Okay. And Rachel yeah. had already came at me in the roast. Oh, yeah. She didn't like you. Yeah, she never. Rachel. Yeah, she never really. Yeah, we didn't have a good relationship in the game. Now we're like best friends. But it was that would have been like my natural progression of things because I never felt threatened by like Nathan because of the fact I knew him and Brew had a friendship, even though he might not have liked me in particularly. Like I knew that since I had Brew, and if Brew had Nathan, somehow we would have had to let bygones be bygones. Did uh, did Brew tell you about the thruple too? Did you know about that? Uh, he didn't tell me about the thruple. He just told me that he was close with Yuling and Alyssa. I, you know, I didn't know. I didn't know anything about a thruple until the finale. I see. Okay. Did you feel left out in retrospect that you didn't get to be a part of a thruple? <laughs> uh, well, th- at that point, it would have been a quintuple or, or, or quadruple. 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 Yeah. quadruple. Oh, that was quadru- exciting. I mean, hey, for for a sixty three year old woman, I'm sure you're thrilled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I was like, I was definitely not, I was definitely not uh, salty about it or anything. I mean, look, like, what are they going to invite oh. mom? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, come on. Come on. Hey. 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 Okay. So on that note, what, what did your mom think of like the sex tips that were given by Alyssa? Did you guys ever have that conversation or was it never brought up ever again? Uh, no, we talked about it. My mom has a great <laughs> sense of humor. And like, yeah. she, she knew like, you know, to a certain extent, it's like, we're making a TV show. Right. And it's like yeah. that, that was definitely for TV. Like that uh-huh. conversation, like there's so much that doesn't make it in, but I knew when I was, I was like, if that conversation does not make it in, I swear to God. Yeah. I was going to be questioning <laughs> what the hell the producers are doing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But I was so glad it made it because I mean, I'm a, I'm a comedian, right? Like I, I do stand up and all that good stuff. And I was like, you know, this is probably the funniest moment of one of the funniest moments of the season. It's the funniest moment yeah. of my season. That was so, really funny. So I'll take it. Uh, a lot of people like since have like just, you know, that is hilarious. It's a great moment. My mom always, my mom felt the same thing. She was like, you know, I, she was like, I probably wouldn't have asked. She was like, but I understand why. And it was really, really funny. So I'll take it. Yeah. You, you didn't do anything to like embarrass her. It's not like you were like, did anything that lewd. No. <laughs> no. Like, right? I, I was, uh, that was my goal though. Like the whole time I was like, I'm not going in to be like some sort of like 63 year old person that has, that doesn't have their mind. <laughs> yeah. <about them. laughs> No, exactly. Yeah, 63 isn't old. Like, my mom's not old. I totally agree. But Maria like, makes the point they don't even qualify for Medicare. Great point, <laughs> Great point Maria. Well done. Um, um, I have a quick question before I forget. So during the data breach, when Brew has the decision to block either you or Alyssa, how confident were you that Brew was going to save you? We asked Alyssa the same question, and she thought that Brew, it was, uh, she, she really wasn't sure. She said 50 50. She yeah. said 50 50. So she had no idea. How were you feeling in that moment? So, looking back on it, in the moment, I remember being very confident because Brew and I had, had that conversation that day about having each other's backs. Yes. And then that. what happens is like time starts adding. And time starts adding up and you're waiting and you're like, he's really thinking about this. And I'm sure Alyssa sort of felt the same thing. Cause it was like, Oh, this should happen quick. Like it should be. Yeah. Made. She said his, his response alone was like 45 minutes. It was, <laughs> it was long, really and, long. Yeah. And, and you know, like people are telling you it's, it's like, you're like, am I going to do it? Then like people are getting in your head. Like everything is going back in your head. It's like, was it all everything that I thought was going to happen going to happen? I don't know. Like you ling and just snaked the game a little bit. And I'm like, then it gets down to like 50 50 and I'm standing there and you can kind of see it. If you watch it, I'm standing there kind of like my arms are folded and I have like this look on my face and it's any look that I've ever had in my life when I'm not feeling too sure about something. It, it looks like it, it just, I'm just like this. 
Yeah. And, and I was watching it and I was like, and I watched it back. I was like, I thought I was going home. And then when he saved me, I dropped down and I like now being so close with Alyssa as I am, like, but at the time only knowing her through the game, I was so excited. I was pumped. You know, you're mm -hmm. still in the game. You get another chance at life, right? Watching it back and watching Alyssa cry was brutal. Oh, not that yeah. I, yeah. Like, not that I, you know, I still am glad I got to stay and all that stuff, but like neither of us should have been in that situation. Still, I still believe that. Uh, but it, but just watching her reaction, it was like, it really meant a lot. To yeah. Me. Really yeah, Alyssa awesome. said Brew texted him, uh, texted her that day that the episode aired and was like, I I was uh, crying that, that next yeah. morning on the circle. Yeah, he was. He texted me uh, that day too and was like, dude, I am I was in shambles that day. And like, you know, it's it's hard. Like, people don't realize as quickly as the show goes how long we are really in there and how much it weighs on your like mental ability. To look mm. at that screen every day and be playing that game every day. And like I I have a great attitude about life and crap. Like I'm always having a great time. But after a while, you're like, how much more can I do? Especially for us, we were all all three of us were in there from day one. Like we were in there yeah. for a long time. It was crazy. Were you bummed more OGs didn't make it to the uh the finale? Um I mean, I wouldn't say bombed. I would say like I was just uh you know, I was, there's a certain level of like, you're proud of the fact that you got to go in right away. And there's a big thing about it. Like when they're like, oh my God, you're part of the original, you're part of the original like number of however many people that go in. But that just means you're there really long. And to make it to the end, like what Frank and you linked it is nothing short of some of the most impressive stuff. Ever. Yeah, for sure. Uh, especially with like the twist. Especially Frank being, well, no, both of them. Like they were top influencers the entire game. Yeah. And still nobody targeted them. That's it's no. wild. Oh, yeah. totally. And like, especially based on like the, the twists of this season, how easy it could have been to get like, you know, fucked over. Yeah. And, and they, they survived all of it to get there. Like that's, you got to tip your cap to that type of performance. For sure. Yep. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> People should have targeted them. <laughs> <laughs> it, it really felt like Joey and Shuby all over again. Uh, Come on, people! Coast into the end. Yeah, one hundred fifty k. Not start that I playing, don't love Joey and Shuby. Start playing for it, future circle contestants. We want to see you play for it. Well, that, yeah, dude. I mean, like, look, I I'm still <laughs> proud of the game that I played. I wouldn't have played it any other way. I think I, I'm not gonna say I got screwed or anything like that. I won't. I will never say that because the game plays how the game plays. Um. But my like one of my favorite moments of that season was like of this season was getting like it's not getting eliminated, but the way that it happened with Everson. Like, if you think about my progression on the show, like the things that I got to do were so crazy specific to this season. Like, I was the fir a first influencer. I'm the last person saved from a data breach. I meet somebody in person before either of us gets blocked. I get blocked, and that I give that person in person valuable information to the game that gets him to the final and he throws shade at you Ling because of it for absolutely no fucking reason. Like, like that was like, when I watched all of that, I was like, wow, he actually did take everything that I said. For, like, for that face Thank value. God you did that too. Cause that portrait was amazing. <laughs> I mean it, that it was, shit was fucking hilarious. <laughs> shit was so funny. <laughs> really tanked Everson's game at the end, but yeah. Oh, it, it did. But I mean, he had, like, no, was, he had no chance. He, he wasn't no Frank. Anyways, yeah. Well, it was like, well, it was like me. <laughs> I, I look like that. a tarantula's anus. <laughs> <laughs> that, that portrait was intense. <laughs> it, was aggressive, it was aggressive stuff. And it was, it was all your aggressive. fault. Yeah. I wouldn't say it was my fault. It's all your fault, John. <laughs> it was all your he fault. You put it in his mind. You really. Draw her as a demon. She's a demon who yeah. eats the circle. <laughs> he did not. He didn't have he to said draw she's that. She's evil. She's me. straight from hell. Uh, <laughs> I just said she. I, if you go back, I said she's a gamer. I said she's a gamer, and she's all about the game. And I was like, Brew is the guy you could trust. That's all I said. That's all I said. And I stand by that. <laughs> You heard it here first, folks, on Reality Alert. Uh, he told Everson to draw, to draw the, the picture. demon picture. <laughs> 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 John's like, oh, Christ. 
Yeah, that was that was weird when you met Everson. That was interesting. Uh, who who would you have wanted to meet if you had been given the chance to like uh, get to go meet someone after you were blocked because you didn't get that chance? See, now here's the thing. I don't know if I would have had a choice. I think a lot of the time, like they kind of push you to go see people. It's a yeah, guess. We're, yeah, yeah. We know. <laughs> we know that. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. you know that. Um, I think they would have probably. I love that you're saying it though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think probably I go. I would choose to see you, Ling, because I would love for her to know how I felt. Yeah, like fa- at face value, and have and her... let her know you had her back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it was. I had her back, and have her realize that she kind of like fucked up. I like the way she played the game. I wasn't so thrilled about, and just like give her that information, and then have the next day be everybody finding out that I went and visited her, and I could say whatever my piece was, like I did without having met her, in my like going away thing. Uh huh. Yeah. You know. But I think they would have asked me to – the thing is that, that I think it worked out perfectly for, for everybody because of the fact that Alyssa had already seen Brew. So he had already been visited. Uh, you Ling had visited Krissa to tell her she'd been eliminated. And then I think they maybe asked me to go see Frank, maybe? I mean, then yeah, again – Frank like, never got a visit, I don't think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, maybe they asked me to – because we were, like, our initial influencers with each other. Maybe that's where we hash out that conversation. Uh-huh. I see. Yeah. I don't know. I really don't know. I when you got sent to that – you to go see Brew. I think you would have seen Brew. Probably. It would, it would I, have been too weird for you to see Frank. We would have been – like, narratively, it would have been too confusing for the right. viewers. Right. It's just whether or not they want somebody to go get visited twice. That's why I'm saying, like, it worked out perfectly for them that it was me and I Everson. See. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the only other perfect situation would have been if it were me and Brew up for elimination, and that's yes, how Brew that would have been amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when re- when you went to that room, like that was uh, that was a cliffhanger episode. Max and I were like, "Oh well, there's got to be a twist coming up at the beginning." Were you thinking the same thing? Were you thinking, "Oh, I'm in this room. Maybe I'll have a chance to get back in the game. This is like different. This is weird." No, I I knew that one of us was definitely going home. Okay, like I knew for sure. But the thing that the thing is, at that point, I had run such a course. Like I said, I thought like I was like, I'm going home today. Like I knew, like when I went into that room, I was like, I'm probably not making it out because Everson hasn't ruffled as many feathers as I did. But then, like when I read the pleas, and I thought Everson's was good, but like I really kind of hit that emotional heartstring that people had been kind of teetering on the whole time, and like kind of like being like, you know, I've made my mistakes, but. I've had a great time essentially. And just like, if you give me another shot, it'll be different type of thing, but I didn't regret anything that I did. So it was unreal. Like in person, when you're kind of sitting there being like, I think my name's going to go up and it comes up and I didn't get, it was almost like I, I was relieved. I wasn't even upset. I was like, I don't have to keep pretending to be my mom anymore. <laughs> uh, so I, I remember sitting there and like, I left and I was like, you know what? For everything that I did, for proving that catfishes don't have to be like snaky liars, I was very proud of the game that I played. So even though I wasn't like, there was no doubt that I, somebody was going home, and the way that it happened for me, like, I'm still proud of it. So I'll, I'll take it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you were, and at the very least, you were very entertaining on the show. Uh, and, and you yeah. did play strategically too, which was uh, also fun to watch. So thanks. All, thanks. all around. Yeah. I mean, we love catfish here on Reality Alert. Yeah, we love them. Oh, we love that. We love that. <laughs> <laughs> They're just the most entertaining part of the show, you know. <laughs> um, uh, th- this this gets asked. Uh, this is from our listener Serena. Uh, how do you think you're portrayed uh, from like a viewer standpoint? And was there anything you wish we had seen? I think you talked about this like a little bit, but like, do you like the way sure. you were portrayed in general? I loved it. I loved it. Uh, I think everything it, I came across as goofy and like genuine as I, gen- as I am, uh, I don't genuine gets thrown around the circle a lot. Um, but like as goofy as I am, as kind of like, like, you know, when I held up the bird and said, Kaka was like a real in time reaction. Like these things, like that became memes of me. Like when I said, I better put the odor on, I don't want to smell if I meet people. It's like a real thing I do in real life. Like, <laughs> it, like these are all things that I just say, like, I, like light me on fire and call me the 4th of July. Like, you know, all, <laughs> yeah. like calling somebody a lying sack of shit. Like, I was happy with all of it because it was really me. Like I was, it was, it was really yeah. just me. 
And so many people like one minor edit can screw how your personality comes across. I'm not talking about our sure. I've seen in any reality show in general. Yeah. yeah. And I've been, I was so fortunate that from everybody seeing me on the show, people that stop me, people that DM me, people that talk to me in general, like reach out to me in general, all the same sentiment that I was the funniest part to them. I like was really entertaining to them. They enjoyed my positivity and like the way that I reacted to things. So I don't, yeah, there are a few things that don't make it in as far as context pieces, like the Gloria Gaynor thing. Yeah. You know, oh, I'll, I'll give you a funny story about something that doesn't make it in. But as far as like the actual edit, I'm proud of it. But the funny story, and this is like a cool little like circle thing, I think. So the the rooms are all lined with lights, right? Like LED lights that are kind of right. like up into the ceiling. And they're like these little strips. And I had this fly in my room that had been there for like, I don't know, like two days. And like, I feel like, you know, like... <laughs> like a clockwork orange type crazy. Like this fly, this fly is like buzzing around. Like you're not even sure if it's real to a certain point. Like you're in this room and I finally trapped it in the bathroom. I, I shut the door. Like I like finally trapped it. And I can't I, believe this didn't make air. Dude. I, <laughs> I whip a towel at this thing several times. And one of them rips down one of the light structures mm. and I catch it in my hand. And they're like, can you just shove it back into the ceiling? Or I was like, yeah. So I go back up there and a perfect They have fit. you do it? <laughs> well, they had they brought in somebody else to like make sure it was set in place. I was gonna like, say, where's the gaffer? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I, I shove this thing back into this little clip that it fits into, and right there on the ceiling is the fucking fly. And I'm like, you son of a bitch. Like, I was like, ready to lose my <laughs> How did that not make this show? Yeah, right. Was how like, is this not on TV? How does, that doesn't how does, count for silly time, huh? Yeah, that right. Doesn't go yeah. on the show. I also, I also did a cartwheel <laughs> down my hallway and yeeted my body into the wall. Didn't make it into my silly time stuff. Oh man! Come so on. you were just trying to pull off jackass stunts. Yeah, exactly, dude. <laughs> trying exactly to make what it was. <laughs> I'm John Franklin. This is <laughs> and the this circle. Is, this is the this is the cartwheel hallway massacre. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's just tacks all over the floor, yeah. face then, up. Like. Then you get a bill from them later after the show's so over. Like I lost money on this. Yeah, game. yeah. Netflix is like, even if you won, you would have owed us more. Like the, <laughs> yeah. the amount of shit you broke in your apartment. <laughs> Uh, did we uh, discuss the cake at all? Uh, yeah, why'd you uh, fuck up that cake? Like that? <laughs> why'd you why'd fuck you up that cake? Frosting? You really that people were like, she's a catfish for sure, dude. Okay, didn't know the cake was gonna come back, but I was like in the moment because I'm just like at the time, 24, like 25 year old dude. I'm like, this looks fantastic. Like, not, not a part of me ever thought. That I, yeah, you were so confident. I was like, this yeah. looks great. I was like, but then again, I'm coming from the mindset like a 24-year-old dude just decorated sure, this cake. Sure, yeah. There's also like a part that you guys didn't see where I missed stacked the cake, like initially. Like I put like the second layer on, when I like instead of the third layer, and I was like, oh, <laughs> fuck, here we go. So I had to take it off. And the my, I'm just glad that everybody got to see that I only decorated one half of the cake. Like, I'm glad that that made it. Like, you could very clearly tell. Like, I was like, I I can't do it. I'm going to have to take a picture for perspective. and hope nobody sees naked cake. And <laughs> that was it. But I was really proud of it when I went out there. And then watching it back, I was like, oh. Mm. I didn't think it was as bad as what everybody was saying it was. But I could, I could still see where they the, were coming from, I guess. Well, yeah. I was glad that I got the, like, I've spoke about this on a couple podcasts. Like, I got to lawyer up and be like, well, I never, I never said I was a decorator. I always yeah. said I was a baker. And Maria a in our of, chat says the same thing. I'm, I'm with John. Uh, bakers don't necessarily decorate that much. It's uh, Rachel said it best because she watched it back. And Rachel said, do you expect the arch architect to decorate the house? And it's like, I can, like, if they were like, make a cake, like they were like, bake a pound cake in your oven. No problem. I could do that. But like yeah. decorated, not my thing. 
I, I think psychologically people are like always just looking for people to target, even if they they're saying they're they're not strategic or they they're thinking aren't. So like they're they're always looking for like the littlest excuses of like who's not a catfish. Yeah. So so like they know that that sixty three year old women who are good at cooking might not be good at decorating, but they're just gonna think of the, the these games are designed for to to sure. make people think that people are catfish. They're meant to trick yep. the contestants into saying that person's a catfish and contestants always fall for it. So yeah. that was the intent, you know. But since when was the game catch the catfish? Like you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah but like, that's what that's what these games do, you know. But even know. even non-catfish the, the, <laughs> the games will be, make people go that person's a catfish. That person's a catfish. Not. Yeah. Person's a catfish. <laughs> so it's that's so it's so dumb to me. That's why it's, we liked the twist in season three, where where the game it wasn't just like decorate a cake; it was decorate a cake for your bestie. So the game wasn't about revealing who is a catfish; it was about revealing who is like everybody's number one alliance. Yeah. Right. That's what I really liked about it. And then there was a little bit of like, oh, is that person a catfish? But everybody was really just distracted on like. Oh, so that's who you're in too. cahoots with. Like that, I was like, for, like that's a much more interesting twist on the game because we've seen the cake decorating like a million yeah. times. I also would have well, been satisfied if the game was just completely anonymous too. I would have been satisfied with that. That's true. I also think I, I like the layer of like the, the season three game because of the fact that it 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 takes away the catfish hunting. Mm-hmm. It takes it like because I think it's such a a dumb thing that gets thrown around in this game. It's like, they could be a catfish. They could be a catfish. They could we be a catfish. We hate it too. Yeah. That's it's, it's our biggest pet peeve of the circle. Yeah. It's like, dude, if the game was, if the game was supposed to be that way, nobody would win. Yeah. Cause everybody thinks everybody's a catfish until like you, you like you yeah. realize whose personality is really whose. I don't know. But you're well, right. And like, I guess if they're going to really pursue that angle, then why not like uh, make it part of the game? And like, I think we had Leon back in season uh, in season three, he did a deep dive with us and, and he said, uh, he said, Oh, you know, you know, if, if there's going to be catfish hunting, why not like add a bounty? Like if you catch a catfish, you get like a certain amount of money or something. Yeah. Like, lean into it if you're going to do it, but otherwise what are we doing here? Yeah. Or like, I'm, I'm like, my thing is, you know, I was in there day one. If you're a catfish and you make it a certain number of eliminations, you should get, a f- like you know like a, a certain amount of money it's like oh if you make it past three eliminations or like if x number of real people are eliminated before you are like that's like five grand or something like yeah. then it's th- that adds the element to the game of like oh you're trying to actually strategize it's sure. not it's not just all like the bubblegum stuff you know yeah alex lake agrees with you he says <laughs> in the chat there should be a catfish bonus if you make it to the end of the catfish you get a bonus yeah, yeah. i mean dude it it's not easy not even just in the game purposes, but mentally speaking as a person to not hear your name for two straight weeks. Like, you know what I mean? For yeah. to be, to be not John and to be Carol and to be talked about as Carol is like, not that I didn't love every second of the, the show. That's not what I mean. I'm just being like, as a person, like your psyche gets played with a little bit. Like, you're like, I got to be this person and be 100% this person. Whereas like when you're playing yourself, you are always 100%. Even if you're 75% yourself that day, it's more than a person faking to be somebody else could be. Sure. You know? Yep. They just shouldn't have had that cake game so early because it's just like everybody was already kind of like onto you and mistrusting you. I was just like, why are we outing catfish like this This early early and giving somebody this much of an uphill battle? You know, like it's kind of like you yeah. don't even have the opportunity to like get your hooks in and build alliances. And then like if you get outed, well, then well, then like like later on, it's like, well, at least then it's like then it doesn't matter because then you have more pe- you have the chance of having more people like brew who don't care. You know, yeah. right. I, I just felt like it was kind of like too early for a game like that. It like, certainly it felt like... bother me later on. No. Yeah. And like it, cer- it certainly felt like. You know a way to trip up both me and Parker because like, you know, like Parker decorates, decorates a cake way too well for her dad. It's like, it's different. Like, I just, it, like, you're right. I, I think it did come out too early. Like if they opened with like the spice girls trivia, like obviously the thumbs up, thumbs down. And then the cake decorating, if it was like that and then spice girls trivia or like that, and then the running game, which the running game 
didn't do it anything so inconsequential yeah like <laughs> who cares it, so like if that was like the second episode or like whatever it was like the second challenge thing but then you flip flop that and like the cake was back then when like you've added four new people to the game yeah it's it probably changes a lot of what happens I yeah mean, not the running part but the cake part that much later is like you know the people who are new to the game like i don't know I'm not speaking on Trevor's behalf. I don't know how well Trevor could decorate a cake, good or bad. I yeah. bet so well. He did so much preparation with Delisa. They released a video, and and it's insane. <laughs> he yeah, probably, well, I heard he probably, he probably went to culinary school for like a couple months. So that's that what I'm saying. Oh, I was cake. just gonna say, I'm, I, I think he has his own bakery now. But that's, that's like you're making my point for me, though, right? Because like, then at that point, like, if I do sh like the shit that I did, and Trevor is as good as he is, uh, and they get to the end, and I don't, you're like. Wow, talk about prep. Like, that's yeah. impressive stuff. Like, I would have loved to see, tr like, Trevor and uh, and uh, Alex do the cake decorating. Yeah, me too. That would have been I would awesome. have loved to have seen it. Mm -hmm. Just to see what they would have come up with. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as long as we're talking about things that we would change about the game, I am curious what your thoughts are on the finale and finale voting, because... I think there's a lot of uh, different theories out there. Like uh, Nick Ullenhoot from season three was on our show last year. He talked about how he would like to see a jury format. Obviously he would, of course, given the position he was in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Alex Brizard actually last night on our podcast had a really interesting thought, which was why not make the finals just four people that way you're rating in three tiers of a, of a, of a top middle and low tier uh, and it would make it more pressure on the contestants to actually uh, rate more strategically. That's interesting. Yeah. I really, I really like that idea. I've really, if I'm going to be honest with you, I never really thought about editing the voting format or anything because it was yeah. just like how we did it the whole game. Right. Like we've always, that's how we rated the whole time. Yeah, for sure. But if you're going to keep adding twists into the game, like the data breach, you're going to add a twist like, you know, the way that they put me in Everson in the bottom two and we had to plea for our way out. The cake isn't a twist, but that's just like a twist that has happened and will continue to happen. Yeah. It's like, why not add sort of like a, a flair to the voting aspect of it at the very sure. end? Right. Yeah. Like, like maybe instead of voting, like just rating the players, you rate based on certain things. Like remember there was the game in the middle of the season where it was like, we voted like who was the most strategic, who was most likely to win. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. What if like there were categories and you put people in them and the more votes they get were more votes towards winning. So it was like, who is the most strategic player for the game? It's like, okay, you vote, let's say Alex or like you, who is the, who do you think and those deserves... votes are public too? Yeah. Okay. So it's like, yeah. who do you think deserves to win? which I think everybody can agree. Everybody thought Frank deserved to win this season. So Frank gets those votes as if he would have got the number one rating, but Frank wouldn't have got votes for being the most strategic. Mm -hmm. Right. Or like who was like, like who was the, I don't know, maybe was, it, like, was Chris the one who got the most votes for being strategic. I can't remember. It was me, me and Chris have both got the most votes. Oh, okay. and, then, yeah. and then I got the, I got the, like the, I tied for most likely to win, which was like, so crazy like that like that should have never yeah. happened but yeah like, you, you see what i'm saying sort of like how in mario party like there are like mini game stars like other stars yeah like yeah that. that's what yeah. i was thinking i was like oh we're doing the mario party thing <laughs> yes. well think about how much because like think about how many times you've played mario party where it's like a guy or like whoever like freaking mario has like one party star like one star from yeah. the game but then somebody else who has no stars but 300 coins and like won every mini game somehow wins the game it's like Maybe mm -hmm. just being the, the best that day doesn't matter that much. I like that. I think that's fun. Yeah. Max? I like it. I mean, I think we'd have <laughs> to figure something out because I think it might be a little easy to, like, game the system. Like, you might be able to, like, yeah. distribute your stars accordingly. But but I kind of like the whole superlative bitness of it. But I, like I, I, I think we workshop it a little bit. But yeah. I think it's possible. Or yeah. you like rate the same way, like one to five, but I really like Alex's idea of making it four, but like you rate one to four or one to three rather, because you're not rating yourself. Um, 
within those categories and it counts yeah, as points. That's the way that UK circle season one was. You used to rate on like a, a one to a, how, how many stars was it, Ben? You would rate like one to four stars, I think. One it to was. four or five, yeah. One to four like or that. five stars instead of just ranking people. Like it was kind of a more complicated system. Yeah. And yeah. They, they, they would game it differently. Yeah, it was actually uh, some people would rate strategic, some weren't, but it was kind of a more complicated system and they changed British it. British TV yeah. always, always doing it best, man. They are. Yeah, they man. And a catfish seen that season, won that it's season. Amazing. You got to check out that season. I'll have to watch oh, it's it. It's amazing. fucking nuts. It's an amazing it's, it's, season. Of, of all the circles I've seen, which is just all of US and all of UK, uh, UK season one is is hands down my favorite. Yeah, hands it's, down. it's a wild season. It's so, so good. Yeah. yeah. That sounds unreal. I like that idea, like rating within the system like that. That's cool. oh yeah, it's yeah. They fun. never they never do it again because I think it's just a little. They were probably like, "This is too much to do." It's with. convoluted a little. Yeah, bit. it's a little convoluted, but it's fun. Yeah, it is. It is yeah. really fun. Uh, yeah, I'm looking to see if we got any more questions. Oh, see, Alex did say five stars. He confirmed it in the chat. Yes, yeah. it was five. Thank stars. you, Alex. Appreciate you. All right. Well, well, we've got a good hour here. Uh, John, thank you so much for coming on the show. This has oh. been a lot of fun. Max, did you have anything else? John, where can people find you oh. on, on the internet? Thank you. I appreciate the plug. Uh, follow me on Instagram at underscore John Franklin underscore underscore. I know I'm trying to, I'm working on it. Um, but, and at John Franklin comedy on TikTok. Uh, I am a stand up comedian. I do stand up all over the city, working on booking all over the country. Uh, so please let me know where you want to find me as far as that. But I'll be putting sketches out, all that good stuff. Uh, come find me. Come say hello. If you see me on the streets of Hoboken, always say hey. Because awesome. I love love getting to talk to people about the show. love getting to talk to people in person. It's my favorite thing. But yeah, come find me wherever. I appreciate you guys. It's been a blast. You guys are awesome. Likewise. Thank yep, you, you were so much fun to have on. Really oh, fun. Dude. Um. Uh, for all the listeners out there, make sure to check us out on uh, patreon.com slash reality alert to support the podcast. Uh, we'd really appreciate all of your support. Uh, make sure to follow us on youtube.com slash reality alert so you can find more exit interviews. We just checked out uh, some conversations with Alyssa and Alex Brizard. So more stuff like that. And tomorrow we are interviewing Mark L. Wahlberg, host of Temptation Island, probably our most famous interview ever. So this will be <laughs> huge. Besides John. So, of course, <laughs> besides John. Yeah. So, what do you uh, mean? Mark L. Wahlberg, <laughs> the superior Mark Wahlberg is coming on the podcast. So We're so excited. We're so excited. very excited. Yes. And uh, make sure to follow us on Instagram at Reality Alert Podcast on Instagram. And, uh, Stay tuned for more content coming up this summer. So uh, thank you, Ben. Anything else? No, nope, that's it. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. Thanks, fellas. Oh, All right. Time. Bye, everybody. Yeah. Bye. It's the place you go when you finish your show. We're your two best friends. Our names are Max and Ben. We're self-proclaimed television experts. It's reality alert. There's something Fugazi going on here.